everybody, welcome Chris Munch. Chris is my friend only because we suffered together for a yeah. weekend. Yeah. <laughs> and then there was some business interactions that happened. And I'm yeah. happy about that. And uh, But I'm happy to have you. Chris is a comedian. Yeah. And you're the only comedian I know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, so I the feel, bar is low is what you're saying. Yeah, well, I feel like I know the comedians in my life. Yeah, yeah. Because they all are very like, you know, vulnerable. Yeah. Seemingly, you know. <laughs> um, but um uh I think it's cool that you've um uh, chosen this profession because yeah. I feel like you chose it, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean I, I think that's I think it's and I think comedian is a pretty broad term, especially nowadays. I think mm-hmm. maybe back when when, you know, a lot of these things well, like stand-up comedy, is that what you mean if you say comedian? I mean, there's part that's part of it, but also sketch comedy and acting and characters and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. is where writing. I kind of, yeah, writing, yeah, all mm-hmm. that kind of, in my mind, fits into being, to me, a comedian is just someone who makes other people laugh professionally, mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess. But I've <laughs> gets, never had to pay for your, for your laughs. That's right, yet. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, not yet. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah, so, I, I, you know, it's been a, something that I think that's been inside of me for a long time. And maybe now, now the courage Mm -hmm. and the, um, the desire are kind of crossing paths now. And it's Mm -hmm. like, okay, I got to do something with this. Um, I got to go either all in. Yeah. It's like, let's do this or, or stop talking about it or go find something else to go all in on. Yeah, exactly. Uh Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your career leading up to this. Cause we're going to talk a lot about your career today. I just felt like that that was, going to be where we're going to go less. And I know it's going to feel a little bit less personal, but sure. You know, so how, give me your resume. Like yeah. how, how did this all come about? How do you become a comedian? Right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I started, uh, as a, as a, as a small boy, uh, I, a, my parents would talk about how I would, you know, s- smile all the time. And I was kind of, a. I loved attention and I was, you know, mm-hmm. not like, not unlike a lot of children, I'm sure. But, um, uh, uh I always loved kind of like I have this picture of me in the center of a room with like my family sitting around and I have this like cowboy hat, like this, I'm just doing like this character and, and mm-hmm. everyone's enjoying themselves. And that, that picture's always meant a lot to me because kind of speaks to this has kind of been in me for since, since an early age. Anyways. Uh, so like in high school though, in, in, in my teenage years, I would do silly characters for my family and friends mm-hmm. and everything. And, you know, they thought I was funny, but I I never dreamed about like actually being on a stage doing something or doing it professionally in any way. And um, it wasn't until after I graduated high school, my church youth group was like, hey, we're putting a drama team together. And all my friends were like, Chris, you have to do this. And I was terrified. I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, I but, did. But I did want to do it. But all your friends to. affirmed yeah, yeah. this gifting yeah absolutely talented. Yeah. yeah and and so uh long story short i w- went to the tryout and then they had on the sheet it said um when can you practice like, like circle or can you like practice tuesday or thursday nights and and i tried to get out of trying out because i like oh i work at mazio's pizza on tuesday and thursday nights there's i mean i can't i mm-hmm. wouldn't be able to go to the the practices and uh <laughs> The, the, the youth leader there, uh, her wisdom was, uh, I'm, I'm forever grateful for because she mm-hmm. just said, just stink and try out and, and yeah. we'll figure out the schedule. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, just get in there. And so, anyways, I went in there and tried out and I made the team. Yep. And then basically was thrust onto a stage um, in front of oh, a, over a thousand people. Five, like wow. two two shows every Wednesday mm-hmm. night. I say shows two two. We would do sketches every Wednesday night, mm-hmm. and we'd have two services. And we and yeah, we would have like a thousand people in each service. Yeah. Um, and so I know, I mean, comedians today that like the biggest room they've ever done is like three hundred people, mm-hmm. and it's just like my first ever. Exp- I mean, fresh out of high school, my yeah. first ever thing was. I was performing in front of 500 people or, yeah. you know, whatever. So it's like, I, I, I don't, I don't take that for granted. I just think, okay, God, why, <clears throat> why, you know, why was I given this, this incredible opportunity? So anyways, long story short again, I, I 
which is performing all like every mm-hmm. week we had these sketches something. we would something and it was just it really helped me to learn how to perform in front of an audience and how to it just got invaluable stage time uh and 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 learning how to or just honing my craft it but yeah. it wasn't stand up it was sketches and 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 a lot of writing and, and uh-huh. that kind of thing and so that was just really really good experience i did that for many years um on like a volunteer basis, basically, mm-hmm. um, probably I'm trying to think, I was probably seven years mm-hmm. doing it, like doing that, maybe six years. I don't forget. And then at uh, Church on the Move uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, is where I attended church, and that's where I would perform at the youth ministry. And then they decided they wanted to start doing more creative elements and things in the adult service. And okay. so I was working at the time at the church in a customer service role. So I would take phone calls and I would sell puppets to people or uh, <laughs> You're curriculum. Like, smile and and like, dial. Like, like I wasn't, I wasn't cold calling people. I was mm-hmm. basically just handling people's orders yeah. and things like uh-huh. that. And, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so I was, I was, I was doing that. And then they, they asked me to be a part of the creative team. Yeah. So in, and then, basically did what I was doing in the youth department, but now we were doing it for adults and, and, and then kind of expanding out of just doing sketches, but also doing um, uh, just all kinds of different creative elements, yep. just serious stuff or, or funny stuff or video. And I started doing video production and learning how to do videos. And so mm-hmm. we would just do video sketches and bits mm-hmm. and all kinds of different stuff. And so, um, yeah. yeah. So I've seen some of that. Like yeah. Some of it was like just um, like almost like Broadway type production. Mm, like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, remember was, you in a straw hat and, a, you know. Yeah. Well, we took it really seriously. And, yeah. and and we always looked at it. And that that's a credit to the leadership of Church on the Move. It was just kind of the attitude of we're going to do this. Like, let's do it is the best we possibly can. Yeah, let's do excellence. it. Let's do it with excellence. And so I... I always took it. It wasn't just church skits to me. Mm-hmm. Um, it was profession. I, profession. This is yeah. like I'm taking this seriously, and mm-hmm. so we would learn. We go to conferences and learn stuff, and and would work on our craft. We really mm-hmm. believed in 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 uh, in growing our craft. Mm-hmm. Where I think a lot of uh, people have the mindset of, well, if it's at a church, then it's just second rate, and it's not. You know, we're just gonna kind of. We don't need to strive. We don't need to strive. Yeah, right. For that. Yeah, yeah. And so, and and you know, I think there's a balance to that, obviously. Um, you know, with budgets and all that kind of stuff. And volunteerism. I think that's yeah. a difficult part of volunteerism. Yeah. Is when do you uh, when do you let go of that? <laughs> this is gonna sound horrible, <laughs> but when do you let go of your first as a pastor? Yeah. Of your when do you let go of your first music minister for the better one? Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sure. You know, yeah. you you started it at 50 people and this dear volunteer come alongside yeah. you. Now you're at 300 Yeah, and now you have a choice of five music ministers mm. from the congregation, mm. all volunteers. Mm-hmm. And how, how do you graduate? Like to me, that just my, blows my mind. Yeah. You know, you break this person's heart. You don't mean to, but sure. You know, um, anyway, it's just fascinating yeah. to me, but yeah, that, it's a, uh, the church environment is difficult. John Maxwell yeah. once said that, leadership as a pastor might be the purest form of leadership yeah because it's all of everyone else's own volition to right. be there yeah right and so you're having to like just deal with all the anyway but, yeah so what happened next yeah so so started doing things for the adults and and then um like those services and stuff and stuff that we would do christmas events and i um and, you know, people started to kind of notice and, you know, we would do conferences and things like that. And churches from all over would come and, and obviously it wasn't just my work. It was, a, we had an incredible creative team and led by, by the now senior pastor, Whitney George. Um, you know, it, it's a testament to his leadership and just brilliance, quite honestly. Um, but uh, just started to, um, um like people just started to kind of notice what we were doing. And, and um, I, I did a video, a group of us did a video called uh, Dad Life in 2010. That was one of those things where 
you know, I, we were just trying to make a video for the dads of our church. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then, you know, we put it on YouTube and it just kind of exploded. exploded. Like and, that's back when viral, you didn't pay to be viral. Yeah. It just <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. actually happened. It, it just actually happened. Uh, and so, yeah, it was like all of a sudden this video has got several million views and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I didn't, we were just like, well, you know, what are we, I don't know. It was just a shock. Quite honestly, mm-hmm. we, we I never thought twice about, like posting things online was like an afterthought back then. Yep. It was just like, oh, It wouldn't yeah. be the reason to do anything. No, yeah, it and it just... wasn't. We were just, yeah, we were just like, oh, we just, this will be fun to do in our in our service for Father's Day. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that that was one of those things that was like such a a blessing to me personally in the sense that it was like just seeing God's like, um, I don't know, faithfulness, but like just seeing how... Um, God has ways of blessing you and and and, and when just you do, not even expecting yeah exactly yeah, not just, expecting just it just because just because yeah. yeah it was just so it meant so much to me I had a guy who reached out to me from Los Angeles that was just like man I saw this video and and uh I'm not really a church guy but I was blown away and he's asking me about my church and mm-hmm. you know just like the, just seeing open doors of people being interested in church because of this video and and he, he he texted me. He 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 worked. Had, I think he had a production company, and he worked a lot with Disney and ABC or something. And so he told he called me one or tweeted. I think he called me. Yeah, he called me. He's like, "Hey, I just had to tell you this. I was over. Um, I was over at. I don't remember the guys' names, but the guys who did who created the show Phineas and Ferb." Mm-hmm. And they're and anyways, he was like, they knew every word to dad life. I was telling them about it. And they're like, they knew the song and all this. I was like, I just thought you want to know that. And it's just like those little moments of like, God knows where you are. Huh. Yeah. And, and you know, you might think you're, oh, I'm just doing this at a church. And mm-hmm. so it's, but it just was kind of one of those reminders that, that God knows where you are and, yeah. and, and. You know, there's times and places and growth and preparation and all those mm-hmm. things that 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 happen in obscurity, mm-hmm. um, and and are necessary. Uh, but but God knows where you are. Yep, and He so, knows when to reveal you. <laughs> so you were um, you were at Church on the Move how how many years? Yeah, so I just left Church on the Move last year. So I w- I worked there for 22 years. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but I started attending there when I was, a when I was like, I think 11 or 12 years old. Mm-hmm. So I've been there most of my life. So, um, so not just, not just your work life, but your personal life's kind of, kind of intertwined, kind of really intertwined. Oh, it's right? my family. I mean, yeah. I, obviously I've got my, my, um, I guess I shouldn't say obviously mm-hmm. I have my immediate family, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, these, you know, the people that are leading the different campuses are people that I grew up with. And, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's a beautiful thing. And, and, um, you know, the community and the, and the base that I have there and, and their graciousness and sending mm-hmm. me and all this stuff. It's just like, I literally just yesterday was talking to my wife about how incredible having a community is and, and especially how lonely comedians lives are. It's like, I don't know how, I don't know how you would do it without just like community. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I've been doing, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself, but I don't know how far you want me to go, but. Well, you, you touched on something I'm, I, I wanted to kind of throw mm-hmm. out to you kind mm-hmm. of a deep thought because there's this, there's this, uh, internet meme with, um, Robin Williams. Mm. So a man goes to a doctor and he says, uh, hey, I'm depressed, says life is harsh and cruel, says he feels all alone in a threatening world. And the doctor says, hey, tr- treatment is simple. The great clown Puglici is in town tonight. Go see him. That should pick you up. And the man bursts into tears and says, but doctor, I am Puglici. Yeah, so he right. was offering this clown up as a solution. Right. And and, and I, that kind of resonates with me yeah. with comedians, but yeah. also with many of us who are just, we have a pose. 
Mm, right. Mm -hmm. We have an exterior yeah. that, that gives us a certain amount of uh, connection mm -hmm. and life. Uh, but it's always not the real person on the inside. Yeah, right. We're right. always acting. Yeah. You know, like um, Shakespeare famously said that uh, all the world is a stage. Yeah. Right. We're but just players. Yeah. You know. And so um, that reminds me of, of that when I think about loneliness and obviously Robin Williams famously yeah. uh, killed himself. Sure. And uh, no one knew, like it was like no one really knew that he had this massive inner struggle going on. Mm. Um, and, um, but uh, you know, actors and comedians aren't the only ones who act. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. You know, so yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, interesting enough. So 22 years at Church in the Move. Yeah. And then we climbed this mountain <laughs> last year. Yeah. I think it was the last 20, year. 2019? 2019. It's 2019, yeah. the year before last. Yeah. Right. Well, I didn't go last year. Climbed it together. Yeah. Then we get off the mountain and uh, you are moving into this season of transition. And yeah. we had, I think, lunch yeah. or breakfast at Savoy, wherever it was. Yeah. And, um, and then I watched you systematically... Quit your job of 22 years, <laughs> yeah. sell your big house. Yeah, that's right. Buy a little house. Yeah, that's right. You know, and just systematically prepare to go all in. Yeah. Can you tell me a little yeah. bit about that? Like your emotions, <laughs> like what was, yeah, because, yeah. And, and the reason why I, I want to hear about that is because, yeah. you know, I mean, comedian sounds wow, but yeah. you know what? I think it's many, a horrible business decision. <laughs> yeah, like, well, maybe <laughs> on on paper. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. But I guess we all go to come to that point where we're like, okay, now is the time to transition. Yeah. When I say we all, I mean anyone in their middle yeah. age uh, has found themselves doing a profession or being in a situation that is just that season's over. Yeah. Right. And yeah. Um, yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. So so got to a place. Uh, uh, at church on the move where I, it was the, it's the weirdest feeling to be like, I don't want to go anywhere. This is my family. I love these mm -hmm. people, but, but feeling like what, what's in my heart to do as a profession mm -hmm. <clears throat> is going in a different direction than, than what church on the move is hiring me to do or what they need in a hired employee to do. Mm hmm. And so I was just starting to see this kind of separation of, of, uh, of trajectories. And um, I tried so hard <laughs> mm -hmm. to make it work Yeah, uh, for several years was just like, I, I want to make this work. And, and if I need to grow in this area and I need to get better at this mm -hmm. and, and really just like, like there was a time where I started to lead a, a portion of our creative team. And, and I thought, well, maybe I just need to step up and, and, you know, learn how to lead a team and, and, and mm -hmm. did that. And, and quite frankly was, was pretty miserable mm -hmm. and, and not good at it. That's the other thing. It's not yep. just that, Oh, this is hard, but I'm, but there's fruit. It's like, no, yeah. we're kind of all miserable. And I think it's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not helping anything. And so it's just like, so I went through all these kind of different things, trying to make it work where I didn't have to leave my home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and finally just got to the place where, um, and I, I was going to say, to be honest, there were times where I was like, I just, I feel like I want to try something. I kind of want to just to try something new. And I and I would pray about it, and I and there were a couple of times where I was like, okay, I think I think I'm I think I'm ready to go. I think mm -hmm. it's time for me to move. And in both both times, I was pretty serious about it. It was like I can't, I just got to the point where it was time to do it, and I was like, I just don't feel right about this. I don't. And I, I feel like it was the Holy Spirit saying, just like, no, it's not time yet, or whatever. And that was confusing too at times. We'd be like, okay, so am I just supposed to wait? You know, just be patient. And when I look back now, it's like, yeah. You just mm -hmm. yeah, like you still have some some maturing to do, and you still have more preparation, and there's some mm -hmm. things you need to learn. And then this last year, uh, it was actually on the trip, on our mountain trip. Okay, uh, where I where I felt like God spoke to me in a profound way. Fascinatingly, though, in that moment, I he was I, I feel like he was 
telling me it's time to go. And I, I, I still didn't, it didn't click with me. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, until months later where I was like, okay, I think it's time for me to go. And then it was like, I remembered the things he said to me on the mountain. I'm like, Oh, when I look at it through that perspective, I think he's saying it's time to go. Mm -hmm. And, um, so got to the place where I, 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 I got to the place where like, I think I'm, I'm caught holding on to one thing and trying to reach for the other thing. Mm -hmm. And it's tearing me apart. So you have to let go. Yeah. It's like, I want this thing. Um, and I feel like God's called me to do this other thing, Mm -hmm. but this thing, um, I don't want to say holding me back. Um, but it was the prior launching pad, but, but yeah, it's like, it's, yeah, it's I, like, I, I have to let this go to go where I need mm-hmm. to go. And um, I started to see, like, I think it would be disobedience for me to stay doing what mm. I'm doing. Um, I'm getting a, a good salary, mm-hmm. I'm comfortable, but uh, I think it would be disobedience for me to stay. And so, um, I, but I, 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 I just, I, I, at 22 years there, I didn't want to make a rash decision. And, sure. and so they graciously gave me a, a season to do a, like a, a sabbatical mm-hmm. just to figure it just out, just to kind of figure it out and go, okay, at the end of this, I need to, I need to come back and make a decision. Mm-hmm. And, and so, um, it, interestingly enough, I had two stand up comedy shows b- booked that like the first two days of my sabbatical. Mm-hmm. And, um, they went really, really well. And I, I had, I had done like maybe one or two stand up shows before that. So I hadn't had a lot of stand up. Stand up was just something I was Is just kind of terrifying. St- it was, oh, it was very, ter- it was very scary. Yeah. You're the only one. Yeah. You, there's, you, there's no one to save you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I hadn't done those jokes before mm-hmm. in front of anybody. A couple of them I had, but, mm-hmm. but there was a vast majority and it was only like a 15 minute set. So it wasn't like, that long or anything. Did but you get heckled? No, actually there was one guy who <laughs> I told him after it was like, you heckled me. And he was just like, Oh, I wasn't trying. I was just, I was just playing around. And, and he's, he's a funny guy, <laughs> but you don't realize like, it, you like it's such a vulnerable place to be. It's mm-hmm. like any little thing that someone kind of sarcastic yeah. might throw out. You're like, Oh God, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's really scary. <laughs> And so anyways, I, I th- th- just, the show went really, really well. And it was like, I tapped into that. I just like, got a glimpse that, that of that inner, thing. Yeah. Of like that. going this, I remember what this is like. Yeah. Um, because like, just for context, we, I wasn't really performing anymore at church on the move. Basically I would, I was doing video production work and, and we would do stories and things like that, which I, which is a great things, mm-hmm. but we, we weren't doing comedy really or anything in that vein. And, um, and, and, and I think I was like, I wasn't really, just didn't really have opportunities to do that anymore. Mm-hmm. And, and so doing these stand up things, it was like a reconnection to like my gifts and, yeah. like, and going, Oh my gosh, I forgot how much I loved this. Uh-huh. And not just, I love it. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm doing things. And I'm seeing, and I get emotional thinking about it, just seeing the faces in the room laughing mm-hmm. and having a great time and going, I'm, I'm, I'm doing things that are bringing joy, uh, in, in, in creating moments that, mm-hmm. that people remember and have, and, and, and like feel mm-hmm. and, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I, uh, I'm just like, that's. Like that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it for I me. I got to do more of that. I got to do more of that. Mm-hmm. And so, um, did the sabbatical prayed and, and, and just really felt like a release to like, go. Oh, I think God's calling me into this kind of mm-hmm. adventure of yeah. going, we went out, we went West and just drove through the desert and drove mm-hmm. through the mountains and, and just God's vastness and mm-hmm. his wide open spaces just yeah. struck me. And I just felt God saying like, do it. Come on. There's, there's so much more mm-hmm. out here than you realize and let's go. Mm-hmm. And, and so that's, w- that's what gave me the confidence to go, okay, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to take some steps. And so we talked, talked to the church and obviously they were so gracious and, mm-hmm. and just have been, um, 
you know, such a blessing to me. Yeah. And, like and, a, like in behind you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I still attend church on the move. And so it still is my home. It's still my family. And, mm-hmm. and there was something though during that, that I think is interesting. I had one of my, one of my pastor friends at church on the move. She said to me, she said, cause I was going to this going like, okay, I'm praying about if I should leave my job or not. Mm-hmm. And she said to me, there's, she's like 99% is not surrender. And what she meant by that was like, just offering up your job isn't really surrender. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> uh, God, this stuff over here, like I love attending here at Church on the Move. Mm-hmm. Don't touch that. Yeah. But I just do something about my job. Mm-hmm. And and it really helped me go into the sabbatical going, God, I'm pushing it all in on the table. Mm-hmm. If I need to move, if you calling me to some other church, I'm open to it. Mm-hmm. I just open my hands. Yeah. And and to like to my relief, I never I never felt God saying that. I just yep. I just sensed that the step right now mm-hmm. was to leave my job. But 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 I'm still like God. If 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 you need me to move or or uh, I'm all in. I'm I'm not I'm not saying here deal with this part of my life, but all this other stuff I don't want you to touch. I'm I'm as best I can. Yeah opening up every door and saying, come on in and, and, and move around the furniture <laughs> if you want to. And so she challenged me to just kind of say, well, if you're going to, if you're going to say, you got to go all the way, you got to go all the way, all in, all in. And, and so as best as I could, you know, I went into the sabbatical thinking, okay, you know, God, I'm opening up every door mm-hmm. and saying, come in and redecorate. Yes. <laughs> do whatever you want to like I'm as best as I know in my, you know, sure. I'm, I'm sure subconsciously I'm holding on to things, but like consciously if every, every area I'm just opening up to you as much mm-hmm. as I can. And just, I just felt like God was, uh, was saying the step in front of you is to, is to, is to leave your position at the church. And, uh, and, and really, in my mind, what I was setting off to do was to write my show. And, you know, I think that the, the, the wiser thing to do is to, is you're going to have, what I'm learning now mm-hmm. is you're going to have to double time. Yes. Either way. Uh huh. Like, I think the wiser thing to do is, is okay, you're in a situation where maybe you feel like there's more, but you're, you're working at a place or working, doing a job that you feel like there's more, Mm -hmm. but I'm not ready financially to just bail and go. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think, I think you're going to have to work double anyway. So just stay at the place you're at and work on your thing until, until that thing becomes so big that you have to leave your, (laughs) like Mm -hmm. I had, like I didn't. Well, I think you just tapped into something that all, all successful entrepreneurs know. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll give you Elon Musk for an example. Mm. All right. He has Tesla. Yeah. He has SpaceX. Yeah. Right. And then he's working on all kinds of other things. Like I yeah, saw yeah, the yeah. other day, he's working on a on a robot. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Like, and and it's because he knows he's always he always has two or three professions. Yeah. And then the then one of those professions is going to cannibalize the other two. Right. Right. Yeah. And, um, I think you're that, that is true of any pursuit. Yeah. Like for me, I'm in real estate and I sell houses for people I helped you with that. Yeah. But I also am doing this. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And if one day this monetizes more than that, right. Then, okay. Yeah. We'll go with that, but then I'll be working on something else. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, um, you made me think of my of my childhood. I remember yeah. uh, deciding to leave the little western Oklahoma town I grew up in, yeah, uh, and uh, go on a missions trip mm. uh, with my church. And um, this missions trip was down in South America somewhere, and I'd never been on an airplane yeah. my entire life. <laughs> and we went to uh, in order to raise money for this trip. I sold pies. I got ladies together in the church. And they all made pies, and I went to a, a like our county fair, and I sold a bunch of pies, and I made like fifteen hundred bucks selling wow. pies. Good lord! 
it's just a story, right? <laughs> but then I realized, wait, I can do this. Yeah. And that was the entrepreneurial seed. It would like it gave me some sort of supercharge yeah. in my heart that if I could just do this, it doesn't have to be pies. Yeah. Maybe it's houses. Maybe it's, you know, for yeah. you know, years. And then another thing I identify with you with a lot is the idea that I've had I had an eighteen year career. Yeah. With the same company. Yeah. Or the same owner of two companies. I, I had a saying by the end of it, I would wake up in the middle of the night and go. He feeds me. He clothes me. <laughs> he pays my health insurance. <laughs> he calls yeah. me my own. I mean, yeah. I was making great money, right? But I was bored. Yeah, right. I had, and 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 it wasn't just boredom, but it was yeah. like I had come to a place where I'd kind of created such a well-oiled machine around me, and I was comfortable. Yeah, right. And um, and then I heard a word from the Lord during that season. It went like this: change is coming. Mm-hmm. Just a little whisper from God. Yeah. Shay, change is coming. Yeah. And I remember that was three years prior to them selling the company. And I just stayed, man. I yeah. just was like, I hunkered down. I'm like, I'm like, I'm not ready, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then one day the owner calls us all into an all company meeting. And, you know, we had at that time about 75 employees. We'd never been together. Oh, wow. We never had an all company meeting. And I was like, oh, Today's the day. <laughs> and we all got, you know, yeah. severances and released. And yeah. and then I went through a season of transition that I resisted way more than you. <laughs> yeah, well. You know, so. Um, I feel like with, with my story, God has always, I have a lot of friends that God's like always telling them to slow down. Mm. And I feel like with me, God's always saying, come on. Let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Come get it. on. I'm mm-hmm. just, I think I'm more cautious by nature. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm. I, I do everything slowly. You know mm-hmm. that about me uh, from our mountain man trip. I'm just like, I climb mountains slowly. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it is about me, but I've always just wanted to do, I like to, um, I don't know. I like to savor. I like to, um, mm-hmm. that's, that makes it sound like a really noble thing because <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's negatives to it as yeah. well. But, but just that idea of like, I, I like you to go just drink in the beauty. That's one thing about a, climbing a mountain. You get so much beauty. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Now those are the good things, but the, the, the bad things would be like, you know, let's go get your butt mm-hmm. in gear. Let's get this thing done. Well, is this what, like I question everything. I love mm-hmm. to like overthink things and, and mm-hmm. really try to, I, I think it's more of a heart of trying to understand like every angle and know what I'm getting myself into or whatever. But so I can be really cautious about things and, and that can create seasons of just like, you're not going, you're not moving Mm -hmm. and, and you need to. And so with, with this scenario of, of, of feeling like I was like, I think it would be disobedience for me to try to like continue to stay here and I need to step out and, and like I was saying, I, th- I think it's probably wiser to, to step out when you, when you have the next thing all prepared and ready to mm-hmm. go. But I, I think for me, just what God was doing in my heart, even just emotionally and just like there was something about stepping out into the adventure mm-hmm. for me that um, I think was exactly what I needed to do. Mm-hmm. And, and of course, because that's, God was in it of just going, look, you don't have the steady paycheck. You don't have um, someone telling you what you should do next. Mm -hmm. Um, It's forcing me to kind of like dream up things out of my own heart. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that to be incredibly fulfilling. And I'm still doing freelance projects. I'm still doing video production things to pay the bills. I'm not Mm -hmm. by any means a a full-time professional comedian. Um, So I don't want to, I don't want to, misrepresent that it is still a it is a it is a a long-term process there's a lot i mean you talk to a lot of very successful comedians and it's yeah i was i was a comedian for eight or nine years before i started like doing it where i could do it as my job yeah where i could actually yeah yeah like earn a living do it yeah i mean it's it is um, i mean honestly in the church world it's actually financially it's it's an easier go quite honestly um than like doing the club circuits and like working oh, yourself yeah. up through uh-huh. all of that. There's very little money in that. Mm-hmm. Um, 
uh, whereas if you're doing events at churches and things, there's usually a, a you know sure. budget there. It's just kind of like the the thing you said earlier, where some of these comedians never been in a, a house more than three hundred. Yeah, right. But if you're at a mega church, yeah, you right. can step out on the stage yeah. and you've got fifteen hundred. Yeah. 2,000, 3,000. Sure. Yeah. And, and and what's cool, though, is like I see God's preparation in, in me. Like, I mean, that's my world. It's like that's mm-hmm. what we did for years and years. I know, I know kind of the church audience. I know um, I, I know how to do things on an, on an excellent level mm-hmm. um, because of the people I worked with and, you know, learned from. But is it a little bit of a soft landing? I mean, I'm going to ask you this yeah. question because there's nobody heckling you at oh, church. And absolutely. Yeah. That, and that's the tension of it is in this like, well, how do you get better if it's all, you know, it's like, if somebody's not going to just totally like, yeah. So the clubs are, are great for, you know, built getting your reps. I mean, then that's mm-hmm. why that's what they, you know, you spend eight, nine years doing clubs mm-hmm. and learning how to handle any possible situation that mm-hmm. someone might throw at you. And then also learning how to be funny to people who don't even know who you are, Yeah, which is a huge learning curve for me because I'm from the world where every time I stepped on stage, it was like my home audience. Yeah. Everyone knows me and or not everybody, mm-hmm. but for the most part, it's like, Oh, yeah. I, know, I know what he's about. Mm-hmm. And you're working with so much common um, ideology. I, they come in like, like they know, like you're already like three steps uh, down the road with an audience. Just the moment I take the stage, because they know I'm a Christian. They know uh, they've seen me do stuff before. So mm-hmm. they, you know, it's like, why do cele- why do movies have celebrities that you know in them? It's because mm-hmm. you already are familiar with who that is. And, and so instead of, releasing a movie with all brand new actors, it'd be cheaper to do it that way. Why don't they do that? Well, it's because I don't have a rapport with Mm -hmm. some no name person. So, so I already had a rapport. That's the long way to try to say that. Mm -hmm. And so that's been a huge learning curve to me. It's just going, Oh yeah. Some of these jokes that the people that know me would work really well. Maybe they don't. It's like, Oh, that's not hitting how I thought it would. Um, And so you got to learn how to, Oh, it's because I'm not giving in the proper context or whatever. I have a question. Yeah, please. Lisa. Yeah. My wife. Yes. My wonderful, incredible wife. You know, Saturday morning, you get out of bed in your jammies, <laughs> you get your cup of coffee, you yeah. crawl back in bed and you say, Lisa, I want to be a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> How did yeah. that go? Yeah, right. That's a great, great question. What's she like, well, so what? it was many 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 conversations years of conversations okay and 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 it's not like i rolled out of bed one day and said i want to be a comedian this has been stuff i've been doing for 20 plus years mm-hmm. it's more like and i how i would say it now is i want to do what i what i have done for one church mhm i want to i want to serve many more churches or just people. I, I just, yeah. I want to multiply mm-hmm. what I've done at church on the move to, to, to be able to serve mm-hmm. as many people, as many people as I can. And so mm-hmm. I, it, in some ways I'm doing something new, but in some ways I kind of feel like I'm just kind of like more deeply connecting into what I've done mm-hmm. of what, what I've already done in the past. And so for, for like, so she's been with me obviously through all the kind of just like, that feeling like I was talking about how, where there's like the trajectories are going, I'm going this way. I'm wanting to do more performing. And, and that's what I feel like I'm really gifted to do. And where I used to do that at church on the move, we're not really doing that anymore. It doesn't seem like that's as high of a value as it used to be. And not that I disagree with where they're going. Cause I think it's great. It's just, I don't fit into it. That was painful. Mm-hmm. I mean, just being honest, it's, it's yep. nothing. N- nobody did anything personally against mm-hmm. me but it's just like that feeling of oh well, they don't they don't need me like they used to yeah and and how to how does that make i mean, I mean that was difficult so there was a lot of downs and mm-hmm. and 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 messy uh, messy yeah oh yeah a mm-hmm. lot of struggling with just my identity and and really i think that's a, a huge 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 i can't overstate that enough how big of a of a deal that was God had to lead me through that. Mm. He, I, I feel like God had to say, 
what happens if you're not performing all the time? Mm. Who are you then? And are you, are you enough? Yep. Uh, you know, I- I- am I enough mm-hmm. for you? Mm-hmm. Even when you're not performing all the time. And I, you know, I, I went through a, like a year long of just working with a counselor to work through uh, separating my identity from my performing. So, and that's still a work in progress. I mean, I don't, you know, that's a lifelong discipleship journey, but I mean, up to that point, it was the church on the move funny guy or, mm-hmm. Oh, Chris Munch, he's hilarious. It's all, all my identity is all attached to mm-hmm. what I can do, the giftings I have or whatever. And, and the way I make people feel, and I, I love using those gifts, but when those, we, we, I love having those gifts, but mm-hmm. I want, I don't want the gifts having me essentially. And I'm now a slave to mm-hmm. dance monkey dance, or you mm-hmm. don't feel like you're valuable. And so Michael Jr., if you're familiar yeah. with Michael Jr., has a, has a thing that he talks about that just really helped me re, uh, recalculate how I approach what I do. And you hear comedians talk about all the time about getting laughs. Mm-hmm. And that's the way Is that, that like getting likes. Yeah, exactly. It'd be the exact same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, um, Oh, you know, I, I killed the room or whatever. It's like, I, they, I, I got, I, I got a yeah. laugh. The joke got a laugh. Mm-hmm. And, and Michael Jr. talks about giving laughs instead of mm-hmm. getting laughs. Mm-hmm. And it's, it it's such a, for a comedian or for someone who, who, who it's a performer, it's revolutionary mm-hmm. because now I'm approaching the stage as an opportunity to give mm. mm-hmm. as instead of an opportunity to validate who I am. Yeah. And that was monumental. And that sounds like a really easy switch. Like, Oh, I get it now. I'm just giving instead of getting, no, it's deeper ingrained than you think it is. And I had this moment, I, it, you know, this process is many, many years but I had a moment at church on the move one time I was doing a Christmas thing. It was uh, Christmas every day of the year, which was this musical uh, silly. We start off being really, um, uh, I don't know, almost like, like we look, we're dressed almost like we're a barbershop quartet, me and my friend Andrew Dale. And we're singing this like silly song. I remember about, seeing that. That's what I was, I was thinking about the, the, the straw hat you had on. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Did you have like stripes on? I had like a, yeah, like a red plaid with a vest <laughs> and then like a sh- matching pants and then like black and white shoes. And, <laughs> and so we like tap danced and it was like this, like really yeah. silly, like, like variety show, like number. Mm-hmm. And then it like, it's called Christmas every day. And Did we're talking you have about to how train we, to tap dance. Uh, so I, I, we totally faked it. Uh, we just had an audio track. What? Yeah. Okay. And then we just did nothing the is real. <laughs> nothing is real now. I showed that to my kids. Oh my gosh! I say I, I say Chris Munch tap dances. Oh my gosh! <sighs> I, you think I just? Oh. I we prepared for maybe a month for that thing. You think I'm you broken? Just all of a sudden, become <laughs> some amazing <laughs> tap dancer. <laughs> And my shoes just for a brief moment make noise, but then after that they stopped making noise. <laughs> hey, it fooled me. That's uh, amazing. All right. Yeah, there you yeah, go. The magic. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, we're doing this silly thing. But then it turns really dark. And it's I it's one yeah. of my one of my favorite sketches we've done because it's just unexpected. It's talking about what if basically it turns into like, well, what if it really Christmas was every day of the year and basically no one's working. No one's yeah. being educated because mm-hmm. we're all on Christmas break. We've been on Christmas break for 37 years. Kind of like COVID. Yeah. I mean, that was pre COVID. So <laughs> when we, when we wrote it, but anyways, uh, I had to wear in ear monitors mm-hmm. uh, so I could hear the musical cues to sing with. And then, and there was just these different cues and stuff. So I couldn't hear the audience. And so I performed, I don't know how many shows we did five or six, maybe seven. And I, I couldn't hear the laughs. I couldn't, I couldn't hear, like I couldn't get the energy from the room that I normally would because I couldn't hear them. And it was so liberating to me. It's be almost like acting. Like I always thought about this. How do, how do these actors yeah. act on a green screen? Yeah. Oh yeah. With nothing around oh, them yeah. in the setting. Oh yeah. 
And all they have on is their little costume, and mm -hmm. they're just having imagination. To they have to imagine it. Yeah. No audience feedback. Exactly. No. No one saying you're doing good or not. Maybe yeah. there is producers back. There I mean, there'd be a director, sure. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, but it, very similar. Mm -hmm. And it, it, but it was it was a monumental shift for me because I I could like legit say I'm doing this to serve these people. Mm. And, and it was so fulfilling to me and I, and I, and I didn't get any of the accolades. Accol I mean, I, people would say afterwards that they loved it or what have you. So there, maybe it's not totally true, but mm -hmm. in the moment, like it wasn't like, oh, these mm -hmm. laughs that I'm getting are just making, are keeping me going. It's like, I'm serving people with this and this is so rewarding. So, um, we talked offside a little bit about this book with Will with Will Smith. Oh yeah. So he's kind of written his autobiography. And, um, since this is a Christian podcast. Yeah. Um, and since Will has always been the kind of the hometown boy. Yeah. Um, you're going to be very disappointed <laughs> when you, when you meet the real Will. <laughs> maybe that's wrong, wrong maybe, thing to maybe say. About as, as wholesome as maybe he's, oh man, you know, but he talks about, uh, a lot of this Yeah. because Will, um, and I'll save as much for the book as, uh, save you guys from it. Uh, I don't, I don't want to spoil too sure. much of the book, Yeah, but his dad kind of grew up in a violent background, yeah. kind of a lot of a uh, physical abuse in his home. Yeah. And will figured out that if his dad was laughing, yeah, he wasn't beating them. Yeah. Wow. And so that, what that became will's ability to, it was out of a wound. Yeah. Like right. oh, his yeah. ability sure. to make people laugh was out of yeah. a wound. But I think it's so gracious how uh, the Lord has walked you through this process. Sure. Uh, slowly. Yeah. Like, you know, you said you don't do anything quickly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But maybe that's out of, um, maybe that's a gift and protection of your heart. I, I, very, very, you know, very possible. Um, Absolutely. So here's a, here's a curveball question for you. Yeah. How do you hear the Lord? Oh, gosh. When it comes to, Big decisions. Yeah, yeah, great. Question. Because you've rep you've referenced it throughout this. Yeah, and I want to. Yeah, want to hear your take. Yeah. So, um, okay, let me. I'll just kind of explain how some of that worked for me, and then maybe we can find mm -hmm. a theme in it. But uh, maybe I'm going to learn a little something today. Good. Uh, so it wasn't just a one time. Thus saith the Lord, mm -hmm. uh, it's now time to go for me. It like for years I'd been knowing something was, was changing. Something is off in the sense of like, I, I couldn't always put my finger on it, but I'm just like, God, there's, there's kind of the question is there more, what if there's more kind of a thing? Mm -hmm. And, and not just like, what if I made more money? It's like, what if there's more, to my relationship with God that I'm not experiencing? Mm -hmm. What if there's more intimacy and more depth to who God is than I'm see currently seeing? And and so it's kind of all those things. I, you know, now I look back and I think it was just, it's really just a call, of, call to discipleship, a deeper sense of discipleship. But um, I don't have a sexy little phrase to say how I hear from God. It's, it, I... <laughs> it's a journey that I hear mm. from God through a journey because it's a little step here. And it's like, it's, it's, uh, going this direction. Oh, oh okay. It's like, it's like, uh, Paul talking about, uh, I forget all the names of the places, but they, like, yeah, all, all the, all his missionary journey. Yes. Right. It's like, we'll go, we'll go here. And then they start going that way. And then it's like, Oh, I think actually, I think we're supposed to go here. Mm -hmm. and, so they, and then, and then it's like, he has a dream where this guy's calling for him to come to Macedonia. And he's like, okay, I think, I think that's right. <laughs> it's like, it's maybe how I would describe it. So it's like, I have this sense that God's wanting to do something and I'm going, is it, what is it? Am I supposed to, am I supposed to move to Los Angeles and try to be an actor? Mm. It, am I supposed to, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, and nowadays even it's like, you can, you can act like everything's mobile. Now I can, I could live in Tulsa and I could mm -hmm. land acting jobs. Um, 
am I like you're just trying on mm-hmm. kind of all these different ideas and thoughts and and then and and then what's sticking is the stuff that you're like oh that is lining up what I feel like God's called me to do mm-hmm. so I went through a process of of learning more about what I feel like God's called me to do mm-hmm. it's a life plan um thing that in a in a year one degree I did mm-hmm. I did a year one degree which is this program that helps you go what is it you know what is the uh you know what what are the things that that really light you up and and what if those were clues that that's what god's called you to do kind mm-hmm. of a, kind of an idea anyway so it's like taking those things into account and then trying to find how would that work or whatever you're just you're you're asking so on but but also how do you hear from god you get quiet yeah and you spend time with him mm-hmm. what is that what is spending time with him it's cutting carving out time in your schedule mm-hmm. to not be thinking about anything else but God mm-hmm. and studying scripture and 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 like I said be, being quiet and all those things um, so there's those kinds of things that I feel like are little adjustments of like mm-hmm. um, there's I I have an example of that but I feel like it'll cut it's it's something I think we would talk about later, but okay, because um, it's something that I've been going through this week that I thought might be interesting to talk about. Mm-hmm. Um, but so let me let me oh, so then I'll, and then I'll talk about my or my, my mountain men experience, yep. yeah, because that Go was ahead. I would say like if you're looking for like a big word from God or whatever, mm-hmm. I went on, I went on a mountain. So so a mountain men trip. Yep. If your our listeners aren't familiar with it it's a it's a setting aside time taking five days out of your schedule we go climb a mountain the mountain is just the excuse it's really Mm -hmm. an opportunity to to shut off our phones turn off all the distractions and get up into the mountains and just be with god and and kind of see what he says (laughs) (laughs) and so for me i in years past i'd always been going god I just thought for sure God's going to be like, thus saith the Lord, mm-hmm. go now into this thing. And, well, you know, Moses. Yeah, right. Sure. You, you, some dramatic thing. And there mm-hmm. were times where, on some of my trips where it was a, kind of a dramatic thing, but oftentimes it was just in the in-betweens. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like on the top of the mountain. It was just like going to fetch some water. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh God, I think I feel you speaking to me about, or a thought or, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so I, so I felt like, I was I was getting into my my tent one night, and I felt like God was saying like I, I like get out of your tent and come spend time with me. Mm-hmm. It was it was at night. It was dark. It was cold. The wind was blowing. Mm-hmm. The tent, you know, the sleeping bag is warm, and I'm like I don't want to get out of my sleeping bag. But I mm-hmm. felt like God was like, come out, come out. I want to talk to you. And I was like, and I wrestled with it. I'm like, I don't. Know, this is weird. Mm-hmm. Am I just making this up? Um, and I just felt like I'm just, I'm, there's no way to know unless I just test it. And mm-hmm. so I got out of bed, got out there. And then that actually happened twice. It happened the first time I got out, felt like I heard from God, went back to bed, woke up a few hours later and I felt like God was saying, come, come back mm-hmm. out again. So it was like three in the morning. Yep. I, I get out of my, out of my tent. I go to the, the, there was this little clearing next to our campsite and it was dark and uh I, by, by the way at 12,000 feet yeah freezing cold yeah. in the middle of the night <laughs> yeah it's not fun and <laughs> everything takes three times as much effort <laughs> yeah that's right that's right <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean like, like breath, just this walk, was yeah. not even this was not an easy thing to do right if you're warm e- right and so I was standing next to a tree, this large pine tree, mm-hmm. beautiful tree that was blocking the wind. The wind was blowing pretty mm-hmm. good. So I was just like trying to stay warm next to this tree and just kind of praying and kind of going, God, I'm here. You know, what do you want to say? And just being quiet. And and I felt like God would say, like, come out into the clearing. Mm. So there's like this big clearing where there weren't any trees. And so I just was kind of like, okay. And so I just walk out into this open space and there's a rock 
like a big rock kind of right in the middle of it. And I just kind of found myself just kind of climbed up on this kind of rock, this kind of just in the middle of this clearing and the wind is blowing. And I just am like feeling God saying like, I, like I'm, I'm like that, that sense of like, um, this is really uncomfortable, but I'm strengthening you like mm-hmm. through this, this discomfort, like the wind, like I was saying, the wind was blowing and, and it's really unsettling at night in the mountains in a clearing. Uh, you feel exposed. You feel very exposed. You just feel like, what? I can't see behind me. Is there like mm-hmm. a wolf back there? Like you just, it's just unsettling because there's no protection. Mm-hmm. And I felt like God was just kind of saying like, I, like I'm with you. you. Yeah, I'm, I'm your protection kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so I, I, in the moment I just thought, this is like a nice moment with God, but I, I didn't like connect the dots. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I got back that I was praying about it more. And I, and, and that's what I perceived as God saying, mm-hmm. like to me, like church on the move was the tree that I'm like hanging on to. Yeah. Like come yeah, out, it's come the out, safety, come out from the safety mm-hmm. and, and, and get out here in the wind. You know, that, that reminds me of, is it Elijah or Elisha? The still small voice. No, I'm not in the wind. Mm. I'm, I'm yeah, in this. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you you pass, I'm going to pass by. But but all the elements of nature are there. Yeah. He's yeah. outside, yeah. you know, um, and um, I've been thinking a lot about that scripture. Here lately. Yeah. yeah. Just, um, I, th- I think the way the Lord wants to speak to us is always, there, there's like, there's you got to get the noise away. I agreed. Whatever. Agreed. In whatever setting. I wish I was better at it. Yeah. In in my home, in home here, yeah, right. Then it's so hard. It's easy er mm-hmm. on a mountain, you know, where yeah. clients aren't calling, yeah, where right. obligations right. aren't, where your financials aren't right mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> you know, but uh, it's, it's easier group, um, in that sense. Um, and I wish I was better at setting myself up for those things. Sure. Um, but I think that's, that's precisely why those kinds of things are so necessary is because, mm-hmm. Man, I mean, distance learning. My kids are at home. I'm working from home. It's like, what the? Like, it's so hard. (laughs) And it seems like every time you go, I'm going to get up early and spend some time. And then it's like, oh, one of my kids woke up early too. That's sweet. Thanks, bud. Thanks, pal. Yeah. Uh, So I've got a 6.30 a.m. one. Oh, gosh. It's like his whole life. Yeah. Just boom. I'm up. Yeah. Actually, not ever since he turned 13. He's 13 now. It's really been He's been sleeping more yeah. <laughs> and the Lord are like, thank you yeah, right. Lord. But no, he, he would be up and around at six 30 in the morning. So. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so you've heard, you, so you, you finally, not only have you heard from the Lord, but you decide to obey. Yeah. All right. So there's, there's two things, right? You yeah. know, the Lord's tugging because some of us, the Lord's been tugging on us for many years. Oh, sure. Right. And I, I would just confess to you that this is true with me as well. Like, yeah, you know, hearing this little word from the Lord, change is coming. Yeah. Uh, I bet if I would have dug in at that juncture, yeah. I would have, he would have said, okay, here is the change that's coming. Yeah. I didn't, I yeah. just freaked out, yeah. but here it is. Yeah. Um, here's how to prepare. Here's what to do next. And oh yeah, this is going to be scary. Yeah. Courage is required. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. And um, um, I, on the other hand, wait till it completely burns to the ground <laughs> And then I'm sitting around in this charred mess. <laughs> and then he's like, okay, what are you going to do now, Shay? You yeah, know? Sure. So um, this has been awesome. Yeah. Do you have any 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 other pointers, any other yeah. thoughts so, as, as you're sharing your story? So so courage is, is required. I think what I'm learning like right now this week, fresh, this is a fresh hot take, mm-hmm. uh, is just how much... Uh, str- strength is required. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so one of the things I never wanted to do was be on social media. I'm just like, I don't, I don't like social media. I don't, I mean, I like it, but I don't like that. I like it. And like for comedians, is it like this kind of how you get all, it's how you get out there. It's like how you mm-hmm. let people know you're available or how you, I mean, that's kind of like the marketplace. And so I've kind of just been slowly coming to grips with like, okay, I think that's probably what I'm going to need to do. And so anyways, I, 
I still don't have the apps on my phone. Like Lisa, my wife posts everything for me. I just make the videos, but basically, so I've been, I've launched a, a, a an Instagram Chris Munch comedy channel and a TikTok channel. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I'm starting, I'm, I'm putting out characters and funny bits and yeah, your, your character, pastor, 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 Bobby Bob, Weathers, Bobby yeah. Weathers. Yeah. So Chris, that's really close to home yeah. <laughs> for me. If you grew up in the Midwest sure, and you had, and you went to a church that was, you know, 25 to 75 people. Okay. Yeah. Bobby Weathers that's, is there. That's him. <laughs> Hey, what's up, everybody? Pastor Bobby here. Welcome to Motivational Manna. How my manna night's doing. Uh, listen, I've got an amazing praise report for you that I can't wait to share with you. And that's what I love. That's, that's if I was going to put my style, if mm-hmm. I was going to kind con- of con- quantify my style. Yeah. I, I'm after the truth. Uh-huh. I think truth is, is funny. And so I... I like things that are like, oh, I know that guy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, like, oh, dude, yeah. that's totally my pastor. Oh, yeah. That I, like, I told, like, that rings true to me. That's, and so with Pastor Bobby Weathers as a character I play, uh, you know, and I do these little silly sermonette things, but, but I, that's what I'm after. I'm trying to find like, like, it's true, but it's got a little, a little zing to it. I went to a church service once. Yeah. Um, because I grew up, charismatic Pentecostal. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And I don't expect Amen. anybody listening to this. That's yeah. not out of that vein to understand this, but if yeah. you were in this, yeah. So did I, I grew up know, in the same thing. Yeah. It was in a nursing home. Okay. They had made a church out of a nursing home. Of course. So they took like the, Why wouldn't you? the, the center of the nursing home with the three wings. Yeah. And chairs went back into each wing. Okay. And the center where the cafeteria was that turned into the, the auditorium, yeah, and they packed that thing out, Dude. but it smelled like old people. <laughs> <laughs> like, like you know, yeah. you know. But I just feel like Bobby Weathers could just totally do it. Just step right in, and a, a, he could take a Sunday, a revival. Just <laughs> sure. I mean, I mean. He, <laughs> <laughs> so, so Pastor Bobby Weathers is a pastor. He's, yeah. he's a he's a fake pastor, right? So I start putting these videos out. Mm-hmm. And, um, I did a, I did a, a character, um, that was like, so, so what, they're not all like Christian jokes. It was, this yeah. other character was like this, uh, this Tinder, uh, uh, what was it? I'm trying to remember what I captioned it, but basically a man on Tinder with an unfortunate name and occupation. Okay. And so he, he has a lisp <laughs> and his name is Steven Stevens. And he works at the Sand Springs Sixth Grade Center in secondary schools. And so when he said, so when he introduces himself, he's like, I'm Stephen Stevens and I work at Sand Springs Sixth Grade Center in secondary schools. <laughs> just wanted to, wanted to get on here and say hey and just say, you know, if, uh, if you like what you see and you like what you hear, and, uh, just go ahead and give it the old swipe right. I'm thinking lighthearted. I'm thinking like, I'm not even saying, Oh, if you have a lisp, you're a total loser. I'm saying that I'm, I'm trying to poke fun at this situation. Yeah. And, and, and the character is, you know, it's a Tinder thing. So I'm also trying to kind of make fun of Tinder. So he's like trying to look really sexy and like schmoozy Mm -hmm. anyway. So this video just kind of takes off Mm -hmm. and, um, all these comments are just pouring in Mm -hmm. of people taking the joke further than I'm comfortable with. Like they're riffing off of the original Uh joke and saying horrible things. Yeah. And all of a sudden I'm just like going, Oh my gosh, what have I done? Mm -hmm. And then I, they, so they started with that video and then they started finding pastor Bobby and they're going, Oh my gosh, this is, this is triggering me. Like Mm -hmm. that I know, I, you know, I came out of a cult just like this, or I, oh, I, this lady gets on and she's like, I love comedians that tear down religion. Yes. Uh, And so now you feel like, oh my God, I'm I'm complicit. Exactly. I'm like, oh, that's not what I'm trying to do at all. 
But now I'm feeling all this responsibility of like, I've created this monster that all these people are now using to go, yeah, look how dumb Christians are. Mm -hmm. That is true. Man, this comedian gets it. He gets what's going on. And you're like, that's not what I'm saying at all. And, and so like, right. I say like, you have to be stronger as I just like having, and even like, honestly, even the, 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 the guy with the lisp, I, I, it forced me to wrestle down. What am I about? Well, I just thought this had this super hilarious thought if Pastor Bobby ended up having a Tinder profile. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I, d- yeah. <laughs> like eventually yeah, they're going to th- get there. It has to be. And yeah. it's absolutely hilarious. He's definitely, he definitely has a music ministry and there will be a music <laughs> video at some point. Oh gosh. <laughs> so we're working on a song Is right he gonna now. going to have a, a, something to twirl? A tambourine, oh, a okay. banner, something. Uh-huh. It'll, it'll be, I don't know, we'll figure, we'll figure out something good. But, but like going... I don't like, is that what I want my comment to be about where like, so it was one of the comments was like, Hey, not cool. Not funny to do, not funny to make fun of people with speech impediments. Yeah. I was thinking Dave Chappelle would have something to say about that because and, yeah. he's out defending. Sure. You know, comedy right now. Yeah. It's under yeah, yeah, assault. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, but, but on it, but I had to really look at that. Mm-hmm. And so I, I, kind of trying to tie this all back into hearing from God. Mm-hmm. I, it scared the crap out of me, quite honestly. And mm-hmm. it made me want to quit. It made me want to just like, you know what? I don't even, I don't even want to be online. I know the only reason I'm doing this is so that I can build some kind of audience that I can book mm-hmm. shows or, or book churches that would go, Oh, I see what this guy does. And yeah, we'd love to have him or whatever. And, and, for me, it's much deeper than just comedy, by the way, too. It's like, I, mm-hmm. I want to minister to people. I want to mm. use comedy as an opportunity to open you up so that I can yeah. say something to you. Um, uh. But that's that's down the road. But the the, the with this, I'm just kind of like, it just made me like want to stop and go, mm. I, I, like, I don't want this. But I'm thankful that I, I you know, I just kind of went to God. I was like, what, yeah. God, what do I do? I just cast my cares on you. I like, this is not what I intended. This is, mm-hmm. it hurts my heart to think mm-hmm. that there would be people out there, someone with a lisp that's like, oh my God, you know, that's what I needed today was somebody to <laughs> remind me of my, you know, <laughs> remind me of my quirks. <laughs> and, and so I, I had been studying the book of Matthew for this class I'm in and just went to Matthew and, and, you know, doesn't, it's not a perfect connection, but like, um, and Jesus was sending out commissioning the disciples. He talks about, you're going to, you're, you're going into a place, um, that doesn't like it's a, it's a cultural difference and, and people that, that don't want to hear the gospel essentially. And it, that made me think of like TikTok in the sense of like, mm-hmm. it's a cesspool of, yes. I mean, the comments are just horrible. Um, and, but he says, be, be wise as serpents and innocence, mm. innocent as doves. Mm-hmm. And I thought that is what I want to be about. And, and quite frankly, my most popular v- video on there, it's, I think it's, as of today, I think it's got 750,000 views is this, is that guy. And mm-hmm. I'm just like thinking, I don't know that I can say I'm being as innocent as a dove in that situation. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm never going to do that character again, but it definitely gives me pause to go. So it, it might give you pause to say, this is a powerful medium. Definitely. So this is crazy. Mm-hmm. I shot that video on a Tuesday night this past Tuesday. Mm-hmm. No, I posted it on Tuesday. I shot it on Monday night, posted it on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. It's now, what is it? Oh, I guess it's Monday. So it's been a week mm-hmm. and it's, I don't know, whatever, 750,000 views, 680,000 different people saw that video. And it's like, that's that staggering. Is in, that is, that is staggering. 680,000 people. You're famous. No, I'm not saying it that way. I'm saying <laughs> I'm joking with what, you. No, no. <laughs> I'm saying like six hundred eighty thousand people saw this stupid thing I did in my bathroom. 
Like mm-hmm. I shot it. Like just shot it in my house on my phone. That's that is staggering to me. Mm-hmm. That kind of like influence or that kind of power. Yeah. In the sense of, I think putting yourself out there forces you mm-hmm. to have to understand what am I really about. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm so thankful through this process right now. Is mm-hmm. as I'm as I'm sharing who I am with people. Yeah. And seeing the way they respond to things, it makes you go, oh. Interesting. It is that and having to really understand and have a conviction for why I'm doing what I'm doing, and, the, and especially with comedy, because it's like mm-hmm. comedy can you be used to tear down people, and people built their careers on just crapping on everybody and everything. Mm-hmm. And but I also see a comedian as as a truth teller, and a comedian as can a prophet as a, yeah. Comedians can mm-hmm. say things that other people can't say. <laughs> and have been and for ha- many years. Right. And they can call out things that, mm-hmm. and people can hear things from a comedian that they can't hear from a pastor or that mm-hmm. they can't hear from at this stage. Yeah. Um, and so that's what, when I even think of like, what am I even in TikTok? What am I like? In my mind, it's like, I can say things, maybe not yet, but I, but I can, I can start that process of building influence with people. Mm where at some point I can say things that they can actually hear Mm -hmm. where, where maybe they wouldn't be able to hear that from Mm -hmm. pastor Bobby. (laughs) Yeah. But, but I think you're looking at the, um, and this is, this is sacred. It's the sacredness of your gift, Mm. whatever it may be. Yeah. Whether it's, you know, a comedic gift Mm -hmm. or whether, you know, whatever, gifts that are in me, you yeah, know, right. Um, I have this little desire to do something called, uh, maybe a series that we'll do with this called in defense of the boring business. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it's like, it just seems so boring. Like I wish, like sometimes I wish, I wish I could just have, like we envy other people's gifts. Oh yeah. I wish I, wish I could just be, you know, uh, exciting, like wh- whatever, oh, yeah. but yeah. maybe that's not me right. and I'm okay with that. Right. Like exactly. I mean, I think it took 50 years or 48 years Mm. to be okay with being in my own skin. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, but it's, it takes courage to approach your gifts and humility. That's exactly right. You know? And so even the gifts that like, I, I marvel at how the arts mm -hmm. are put on a pedestal in Mm -hmm. America. Mm -hmm. Like you watch kids shows Right. And it's what's the the theme is always like, I'm a singer, but my parents don't believe in me or I'm, I'm, I'm really an artist, but no one will Uh let me do it or whatever. It's like always like this, like thing of like the most noble thing you can do is be an artist. Mm -hmm. And even me being an artist, if you want to call it that, I would call myself an Mm -hmm. artist on a, on a very humble way. I'm not saying I'm like a high end Mm-hmm. I don't know. You get around some people like that dude is a stinking artist. He is thinking on another wavelength. Like but, a Toby Mac or a Will yeah. Smith or a, Will Smith. Sure. You know, I mean like, honestly, oh, like, yeah. you're just like blown away with their giftedness. Yeah. Right. But and they're just thinking about things on like a whole mm-hmm. another level, the, the depth that you're just like, that is an artist. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm not saying I'm putting myself in that category, but I do take what I do seriously. And I think of it as an art form. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had to embrace my gifts. Yeah. Because I was even like, like seeing friends or something that are, you know, really good with business that are mm-hmm. making a lot more money than I'm making. And like, oh, I love the way. But is money can, the measurement? Right. Sure. Right. So you it's know. like, or, or leadership ability. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, that guy just knows what to do. Mm. And that guy just has a way of being yeah. able to, to, know where to go and how to do it, like all that stuff. And I, you know, I don't have that gift. I, I like leading a team is really hard for me. Mm-hmm. I love people. I love pastoring people. I love. You did pretty good on the mountain. mountain oh, thank trip. you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, you and, and Alfredo had a really great cadence. That's true. Yeah. You know, you found your, your medium on how to do that. It has to be really simple. Like, and I'm yeah. not, it's not a joke, but mm-hmm. like for me to lead something, it has to be very simple. And it's like, I, my job can't be a lot of moving parts. Right. It's like, it has to be like, I just have to get these guys to the top of this mountain <laughs> and back down <laughs> safely. And then we're going to just talk along the way. 
I mean, yeah. it just has to be super. But if mm-hmm. it's like, if I'm like trying to explore Deep. some new course and find, like, it's like, I'm not like yeah excavator guy, or I'm sorry, uh, expedition guy. Like when mm-hmm. I'm going to blaze a trail of some new thing. But you or, know. And yeah. the only way you know yeah. is still small voice. Sure. Quiet. Yeah. Contemplative. Sure. Oh, I yeah. think, you know, I think about some of these things, uh, hours of conversation with your wife, mm-hmm. Absolutely. right? Cause they, they do something, they bring a level of yeah. honesty. Allure brings a level of honesty to me. Yeah. That's like, yeah, she yeah. doesn't buy the BS. Yeah. You know? Totally. Um, if you're thinking about making a big move like this too, I would say, listen, or if listen to your spouse, mm, yes, listen to your spouse, do it together, do it together. And that, I'm so thankful, Lisa and I, we, we've we said from the beginning, this is our ministry. This isn't mm-hmm. my ministry. She's mm-hmm. more a behind-the-scenes type of person. Mm-hmm. She's got a, a much uh, smaller personality mm-hmm. where I can kind of flip the switch and, and have a bigger personality or be, uh, you know, I, mm-hmm. I, I don't mind being on a stage. She would absolutely be mortified being on a mm-hmm. stage. But but that can kind of create this thing of like, well, it's, this is my thing. And she... It's helps me do the, my thing. Yeah. And it's like, no, 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 no. no. This she's is, not in the sidecar. She's got no. her own yeah. motorcycle. Right. Yeah. And she's doing it her way. This is our thing. Uh-huh. This is our ministry. Yep. And, and setting that up has really helped her to just be able to be honest about, you know, Hey, what, mm-hmm. you know, what, what do you think? And it, and it got to the point where she was saying, I think it's time for you to, to, to take <laughs> she, a step. She's like, I'm tired of you being miserable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I, I say that jokingly, but in, in, or I, I, I say that in all honesty, like, like mm-hmm. that's what she said to me. It was like, I can see that we've tried to make this work mm-hmm. and it's just not working. And mm-hmm. I, and I, and I think it's time for you to, to do, to try something else. And, and, um, and like I said, I don't even remember, it wasn't like all of a sudden a big, Mm-hmm. it's like this was hours and years and months mm-hmm. of conversations that led us to the point where like, we both just had peace about taking a step. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, a couple of things I saw when this all went down Yeah, for whatever reason, I got to have a conversation with you about it, which mm. was kind of cool. <laughs> and, um, uh, after the trip, after yeah. our, our trip. Okay. Yeah. And I noticed that you positioned yourself financially to do it. Yeah. Right which was fascinating as a yeah. dad with yeah four kids four kids yeah right absolutely you know that's scary business because yeah. you need we 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 have to have a roof over our heads yeah food in our own mouths yeah to do anything right but you did that you yeah. you you sold your home yeah uh, which is probably sacrificial sure um yep. and uh <laughs> yeah and now you're in this smaller home smaller house yeah thousand, which is a thousand square feet smaller yes uh-huh. uh yeah. And and we're distance learning, right? We're yeah. We're homeschooling, kind of. Well, yeah. yeah they're, they're they're back. There's just been pockets of yeah of distance learning, yeah. obviously. Uh huh. Else, and that'll but, but in Crocs, a smaller house, it's just yeah, it's more like. But that. your kids are also becoming teenagers, right? Yeah. And so yeah. they need more space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably the wrong time to sell. Yeah, exactly. I mean, like conventionally. Oh, absolutely. Like it, it, makes, it, not, makes, it doesn't, doesn't make, make a any ton of sense. sense. Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, willing to do the counter. The, the counterintelligent, countercultural thing. Yeah. Um, and I just think you're set up, man. Yeah. You're set up because you can, t- if you can take steps back to move forward. Yeah. You're set up. Yeah. You know, and I uh, had a mentor of mine tell me, go slow so you can go fast. Mm-hmm. And that's always stuck with me. And, and I, the whole selling our house and all, it just felt like that's what God was, was saying. Like mm-hmm. I just felt. <laughs> didn't realize how much we're going to talk about God speaking to us, but uh, I just had this sense. Like, I think, I I think this is what we're supposed to do. And, um, and so that's what we did. And uh, yeah, it it, just God's graciousness. I mean, we, we, Mm -hmm. God has blessed us, um, you know, financially to, to, to be able to be in a situation where we can, go slow so we can go fast Mm -hmm. and um i just see god's hand on what we're doing and and it's uh it's if i think too much about 
the the circumstances of everything it gets it that's where it gets yeah that's where it gets scary Mm -hmm. but when i just continue to remind myself that god is with me Mm -hmm. that he's called me to do this uh and um and and this this kind of mindset of just like i'm here to serve people with my gift Mm -hmm. and how what are different ways i can do that and and also in my heart i just feel like uh, like like multiple multiple channels of income Mm -hmm. is Mm -hmm. is is what i'm about yep it's not about like we talked about if if one overtakes the other then fine but but like as i'm growing and learning and launching and all this Mm -hmm. stuff it's like i i can see i'm gonna need multiple multiple channels well and that's that's actually since you are a safety-minded risk adverse sure yeah like personality you describe that yourself it is the safest route. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. to always have something, Yeah, you know, and, um, just bless you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming and hanging out with me. I loved hearing your story. Yeah. Um, a, a part of what we're doing here is the idea that, uh, the Lord really wants to, uh, invade five specific areas of mm. your life. Yeah. Uh, the first area would be just caring for your heart um, and how we care for our heart is union with Jesus. Yeah. And then caring for your family. Yeah. Um, both financially and spiritually, which you might feel like right now, <laughs> holy crap. Yeah. yeah. You know, but it, that yeah. the finances are always on the backside of sure. obedience. Right. Yeah. Um, and, um, and then caring for your family spiritually. Yeah. But we do those things way before we ever touch on career. Yes. All right. Right. And career is subservient to these other things. Meaning, Chris, if you had to, you would go swing a hammer or dig a ditch. Absolutely. To to make sure everybody's got food in their mouth or roof over their head. Sure. Um, and then the last thing we d- we deal with is legacy and finishing well. Mm. Um, and that idea is a relational idea is when you pass that your kids still love you. Yeah, right. Your wife still <laughs> wants to be next to you, you know. But um, this career thing is fascinating. And and today we talked about career. It's fascinating because our culture elevates career above all else. Yeah, absolutely. And that's antithetical to scripture. Yeah. Um, And uh, our culture confuses career and identity. Absolutely. I want to be an actor. Yeah. Or a singer. Yeah. Like we talked about that earlier. Or an artist. Yeah. But that's not who you are. That's something you You do. do. Yeah. Right. And so when you break down, and I, I think it's super awesome. You said, "Hey, I think I would describe myself as an artist, but I could tell you were describing it in terms of skill sets." Yeah, yeah. Not so much in terms of identity, who you are, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, uh, who you are is who you are in relationship to your family. It's relational yeah. in yeah. relationship to your Lord. Yes, absolutely. Right. Um, one of the things that we say um, often in this environment is that uh, how you care for your heart is to surrender your heart to Jesus. Mm. And when we do that, it's like allowing the Lord to move the chess pieces of your life around as he wishes. Yeah. Not as you wish. Yeah. The problem with believers is, and I know we feel this dissonance, but it's that we're really playing checkers when he's playing chess absolutely right yeah and so when you like just like for instance whenever you heard oh, man i need to sell this house yeah right yeah well that's actually a pretty good clue that he's playing chess with that yeah right right yeah yeah, yeah. and you can give up that house yeah and the you know there may be a better house maybe not yeah right but there might just be a better situation totally you know and um so that's the hope that we live in. And that's why I had you come here. And that's why we talked about career all day long. Yeah. And suddenly we're, we're talking about career, but we're also talking about how to hear God's voice. Yeah, totally. I love it. Yeah. So it's awesome. Anyway. Well, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. Appreciate it. You bet. All right.